welcome back to Rachel and Bella Crafts. Rachel here. I um, just want to welcome you to our channel. If we haven't officially done that yet, um, huge welcome to you if you are new. If you are old subscribers, great to have you back. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me for my video today for the A to Z Christmas craft collaboration. Um, a couple of things I just wanted to quickly mention before I go on to my project for today. Um, I just want to say a huge thank you to you all for um, just your huge support that you have shown to um, myself, um, Bella um, and all of the channels in the collaboration. Um, it has just been absolutely amazing. None of us had any idea um, how the collaboration was going to be received, if anybody was going to watch it. Um, and you cut, the response has just been tremendous. You, you have been absolutely amazing. And um, we are just so grateful for the time that you're taking, um, the enthusiasm that you've driven, um, the spreading of the word through uh, Facebook, your Instagram, those of you that have um, used the hashtag and posted photographs of what you've made. We are all so grateful because, um, you know, there's a lot of time and effort when, as you will know, into them all making their videos. Uh, a lot of nerves um and just to have that amazing positive response has meant so much to them all so i just really want to thank you very much for that i also want to say a huge thank you to all of the girls in the collaboration haven't they been amazing they really have completely inspired me um even when i was probably in bed to be able to just get up every morning and pop my ipad on and oh, is the video up that kind of buzz that has just flowed throughout the whole month um it's, it's just been tremendous and they have been fantastic there has not been a single ebb to that flow it has just gone like this the whole time and the excitement has just continued their enthusiasm has continued and their creations have been amazing um bella has very kindly made me a journal which i am so excited about filling in december um i can't i can't jump <laughs> every words out because i'm just really excited about it i can't wait to play um it's it's not kind of gone how i planned for myself i was hoping every day to kind of you know craft along with everybody um didn't go like that i ended up kind of taking november out which was not the plan but that's fine i've got december i'll squeeze a little bit of christmas shopping in that'll be sorted but it'll be craft time i'm determined i do need to tidy up my desk first though because it does look like a bomb's gone off in here today so you guys just focus on this lovely neat little square here um and i'm going to just tell you two more things um there's one other person i would also like to thank before i go on and that is bella my mum. Those of you that don't know us very well or are not um, uh, don't know our channel, I'm Rach. Bella is my mum. Um, her name is actually Angelita. We call her Bella because her surname, maiden name is Bellanato. Family is Spanish. Cut a long story short, she's Bella to you guys. Um, so when we're talking about Bella, that's mum. She has already done her video. You will have met her. She did V. Um, and quite frankly, I wouldn't have made it to this month without my mum. She has been absolutely amazing. We have had so much um, traffic this last month. Um, it's just been amazing. Um, you know, new subscribers, comments to respond to on YouTube, um, Instagram, um, our Facebook group, and of course at the Etsy shop. Um, and the orders have continued coming in, even though I was off poorly. You know, business has to continue. And um, mum has literally done everything. So she has been absolutely fantastic. Um, she's done all of your uh, deliveries. Um, packaged everything she, she's just been amazing and i really would not have survived the month without her so thank you mum love you very much <laughs> right on to the next bit now no more mushy mushy let's get into business so two things order of the day today before i start the journal giveaway a huge apology i've already explained that you know why where i've been <laughs> um i haven't finished it yet i am sorry smack wrist but i've done my best i'm almost there I'm not going to draw the journal giveaway today. There are two reasons why. The first reason is because I haven't yet finished the journal and I would like to be able to show you the journal when I do the draw. The second reason why is because none of us could have predicted how amazing the response was going to be to this collaboration. We had no idea of the volume of traffic that was going to come with it, the amount of comments that were going to be left. Um, and there has a, a lot of sorting to do. Um, and obviously I have to corroborate um, that the, the comments have been left on every video. I can't just literally put one video in, draw it and hey presto, I have to check it all. So it's going to take a little bit of time um, and I'm just asking for a couple more days. So the draw is going to take place in a video that will air on Friday the 3rd. So it's only a couple of days late. Um, 
but it will give us time and it will give you time because I know you're all still trying to catch up with some of the videos as well. You need to go back and comment on all of these videos in order to be part of the giveaway. Um, nobody is exempt from the giveaway. Even the girls in the collaboration are in the giveaway. So the only person who's exempt is myself, <laughs> obviously, because I'm making it. Um, but everybody else, it is open to all of you. It is not um, a UK only. It is an international giveaway. Um, I'm not asking for anybody to pay the postage. Uh, I will cover that. This is our thank you to you um, just for your um, being here and for crafting along with us and not really only that but also for the amazing year that we've had with you all so um please 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 make sure that you take this opportunity to go back and enter all you have to do is uh watch each video leave a like leave a comment on every video in the collaboration and please if you will subscribe to their channels that's a big ask from me just to show these girls some support um i do hope that you will continue to support their channels after this collaboration as well because they're just amazing they're just these, these wonderful new um enthusiastic uh channels and it's, it's just great to you know show them some support isn't it and help them along um so yeah journal giveaway december the third i'm going to flash that across your screen now um it will go up i don't know yet what time but the draw will stop and this is the important thing now. You need to have done all your commenting by midnight, my time, on December the 2nd. So you've got two days really now after you will have caught this video, I hope, um, to go back and, and to catch up. Now, if you don't have time to watch all of their videos, that's fine. Put them in your watch later list. I'll keep coming back to our playlist. We have a playlist I've linked below. Every single video is in there in order. Um, I know there's been a bit of confusion with perhaps some of the titles or the hashtag not picking everybody up, but they're all in that playlist. So please, please, please take the opportunity to go now and enter so that you all have the opportunity. Second thing, um, we've had a sale in the Etsy shop, our Etsy shop, Rich and Bella Crafts, over uh, Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Um, we are extending that for you guys for the rest of this week. Um, we have got kits 50 percent off all of our digital kits so please go take advantage of that now you know it's a great offer for you all um our journals are um some of them are up to 30 percent off so the big blue one that we did that's in there now with 30 percent off and also we've got ephemera there. there's christmas ephemera there's christmas fabric we've got fabric flips we've got our vintage fabric packs they are all 25 percent off so just for you to be aware because i don't i hate it when people say after oh i didn't know I'm letting you know there's a big sale that's it that's enough no more housekeeping let's get on with the show okay so today i am bringing you number one a partridge in a pear tree now when i first had this um obviously i was going to put myself last i wasn't going to stick myself in front of everybody else was i so i was always going to go last and when i realized i didn't have enough letters and i thought okay we're going to add on uh, the 12 days of Christmas, because that'll give us a few more, you know, letters and numbers to play with. We can get some more people involved. Fantastic. And then I panicked and thought, oh my gosh, what am I going to do with a partridge in a pear tree? Oh, so <laughs> it is actually today, the 30th of November. I don't know if you want to just see that on my watch. I don't know if you can see that. It is Tuesday, the 30th of November today. Um, Helen has aired her video this morning. I am literally doing this at midnight basically it's not really midnight it's the middle of the day but you know what i mean this is the last call um i've had to wait until everybody's done their videos because i really wanted to make sure <laughs> i didn't repeat something someone had done i wanted to bring you something fresh um and i needed some inspiration i mean gosh where was i gonna go with a partridge in a pear tree well as always my mother's come to the rescue and she inspires me consistently even when she doesn't mean to and she threw out a wonderful word yesterday and she went, oh, well, have you thought about? And it all fell into place. So I'm going to explain to you now what we're going to do. Something a little bit different, but I'm hoping you're all going to be able to craft along. This is out here in front of me, so I don't forget to tell you. This is a freebie. This is the image I'm going to be using today. I'm actually going to be using this one, I think. The reason I've done this sheet and repeated the images is because there's nothing worse than you having a freebie and you don't know the size or it's not the size. I've done one in pretty much every size. So it doesn't matter what you want to do with it. If you want to make a pocket with it, if you want to make a journal card with it, if you want to use it to just embellish your page, you've got it in every size you could possibly need. All that's on one page. There's a link below. Click on the link and you can download the um the freebie and i've also done uh the words for you as well of course you all know how to print this off if you want an even smaller half size and i've put some of the flowers on this you can cut those out so that's that so i don't forget but that's where i've got my image from today all right 
Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We are going to make a belly band. But it's a belly band with a difference. We're going to make it out of fabric. Now, like I say, I watched through all of the other videos and the one thing um, I haven't seen a lot of is fabric. So I thought, okay, I'm, I'm going to be fairly safe with that. I'm going to go with fabric. Um, and I love working with fabric because I think it's just something a little bit different. Now, if you don't have fabric, don't worry, you can do this with paper. You don't need to have fabric. Um, if you want to do it with fabric, I don't know, go and tear up a pillowcase or something. You don't need to use these colours. I'm only using these colours because it goes with what I'm doing in my journal and because it's Christmas. Obviously, you can do this in any colour you like. I've, I've got a piece here in a neutral colour just to kind of demonstrate that. But what we're going to be making is um, a pear tree. And we're going to make it out of fabric. And it's going to be our belly band. So let me explain. What you will need are several squares of fabric. So these are some that I've got here for an example. Now, from a size perspective, I'll just quickly explain. I started with my squares 12 centimetres by 12 centimetres. Made it up into the top of the tree and it was beautiful, but it was far too big for the page. So I've tapered it down, tapered it down. And then as I was doing it, I suddenly thought, hang on a minute, all the branches of a tree are not the same size. So I've actually ended up with some different sizes. So I've got some in there varying from, oh, where's my ruler gone? There it is. Um, some of them are six centimeters, some of them are nine centimeters and some of them are 10 centimeters square. So just to give you an idea, the sizes I'm working with, um, and I'm going to show you two examples of the way that you can fold um, these squares to make the top of the tree, because that's what we're going to make first. We're going to make the top of the tree. So I'm just going to move that bit out of the way there a moment, because that is my trunk. And I'm just going to move that, because that's my needle threaded ready. And there's my pins. So what we're going to do is you're going to take a square of fabric. And this is not a new idea. I've seen this done before for flowers. So, you know, this is not an original idea to me. I'm just going to use this. Uh, process for the video okay you're going to take your square of fabric and you're going to fold it in half but you're going to fold it uh, messily dare I say that word so we don't want it to meet we want it to sit like this okay we want it to sit so it's slightly off um off square and then we're going to fold it again okay so that there now is going to form one of your we're going to call them branches if it was a flower we'd call it a petal but i'm going to call them branches today okay and that's it i'm going to stick a pin in there for now and that's it that's all you need to do so i'm going to just do two more to show you so i'm going to fold them in half i'm going to slightly offset them it doesn't matter with in fact the more fray the better because it's supposed to look like a tree so you know it doesn't need to be really tidy i did tie with the idea of using my pink in shears and i thought mm, that might give me a really um you know jagged edge but then I thought, actually, I, I quite like the fray look on here. So um, I went with the fray. But if you're using paper, then, you know, you definitely might want to do it with uh, some, and well, obviously not your material pink and shears, but if you've got scissors that do an edge in, it might be better because it'll just give it a bit more texture because it is meant to look like a tree. So again, we're just taking the squares, folding them in half, slightly off centre, and then again, folding it in half. But again, slightly off centre. So the idea is that you've got kind of still got four peaks in a way. There's no right or wrong way to fold these. It is really as simple as that. And I'm just using the pin at the moment to secure them into place. So they don't spring everywhere. And I will do one more. Now, if you do fold it in half because it's annoying you not having symmetry, that's fine. You can simply then bring it up like that. And that'll give you a little bit more branch for your buck, as they say. There we go. So, you know, similar process. You can either leave them slightly open or you can do it like that. So that's how I've made my branches, okay? So I'm going to just move those out of the way because they are a little bit small and they're not what I wanted to work with. So these here, these are the real McCoy. Now, as I explained just now, these are slightly bigger. So let me just show you. I've got two different colours. This one here, I think, is nine, judging by the look of it. Yes, well, we'll call it eight and a half. Nobody's measuring. It doesn't really matter. The only thing I would suggest is that you just try and make them square because it just makes it a little bit easier when you're folding. But when I did my uh, prototype last night, I did actually use 
rectangles because I had them cut ready for fabric flips. So it's it's still worked out. It doesn't matter. It's meant to be a tree. It's not meant to be perfect. So what we're going to do is we've now folded. I folded all my little bits of fabric. Um, they're all done ready. You can see they're all slightly different sizes. And I have got one, two, three, four, five. I've got six. I've got three of each colour. Um, because I did one last night. You can do it all in the same colour if you like. I just thought it would be a little bit prettier on the eye especially for you guys at home watching um if i put the different colors in so all i'm doing now simply is fanning them out now now obviously they're gonna um overrun each other overrun is that even a word you know what i mean they're gonna overlap that's the word i was looking for they're gonna overlap and that's fine because it is a tree or it's meant to look like a tree um you know when we're kids and we go to the, the seaside and we had those um, windmill flowers on sticks. <sighs> and you blow it and it blows around. That's kind of the effect we're looking for here. Okay. So this is kind of going to be your windmill on a stick tree. And you might just want to complete that by doing it like that. So you can either have it in that process. I'm going to actually keep that one on the top because I like that red bit there. Um, the green is obviously providing the look of greenery. Um, and again, I'm going to be too fussy. And you're going to aim for the center now if you are doing this with paper and you're doing it with paper squares folding them over to make the petals or the branches at this point now you will get your um oh my goodness what have i done with mine oh it's all the way over the other side i'm not going to jump up now but my cropper dial you would now um so what i would suggest you do if you're doing this with paper now not doing it with fabric get some washi tape tape with washi so that they all just stuck on top of each other, on the back perhaps, so they all stay in place and then gently pick it up, take your cropper dial and place the cropper dial into the centre and cut the hole in the centre. So if you're doing it with paper, that's what you need to do now, okay? That's your next step. Once you've cut the hole in the centre, you can then take a paper fastener, or brad or however you want to refer to it, feed it through the hole and then open it up and then that will hold your tree together, okay? Uh, I'm doing it with fabric, so I'm not going to do it that way. And I'm going to continue now and show you what I'm going to do. Now, I'm not going to use my sewing machine today. I'm going to hand stitch. And I'm going to hand stitch in the roughest way because I don't want my branches to get really tight. It's meant to look like a nice... Um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, healthy tree. <laughs> so I've put a pin in just to hold them in place, but I'm simply now going to just run uh, a little running stitch and I'm using um, two, uh, two threads from Silks because I want to be able to see the stitch, mainly for you guys, you can see what I've done, um, but also because um, it's going to kind of add to the decoration as well. So you can take as much or as little time as you want over this step. It's not a complicated stitch. Um, if, you, if you're not used to sewing, that's fine. If you want to just glue these into place, you can do that too. But um, I really just wanted to add a little bit of stitch into this um, and, and that's it. It's as simple as that. So I'm just going to take that one back there now and finish behind. I'm not going to be using loads and loads and loads of stitching and that's it. And then I'm just going to make a little knot at the back so that it doesn't move. And then that means then I can remove my pin and that's going to stay in place. So I hope you caught that then. Let me just cut that. I'm just going to put my knot back in ready for the next one. Otherwise, I may forget. Okay, and then I'm going to take out my pin. Now, you can see now that stays in place. All right, and I've got a nice little added little bit of decoration across there. Now, depending on how good you are at sewing, my hand stitching leaves a lot to be desired. Um, you could do all sorts of manner of lovely things here now. So this could really, if you're into slow stitching, this is where you're really going to come into your own. Obviously, you can do this as quickly or as, um, you know, take as much time over it as you like. I'm obviously doing this quite quickly because... I've got you guys here with me today and I don't want you to get bored. Now, while I'm just going to quickly do this, I'm going to just give you a little bit of um, information on the partridge in a pear tree. Now, I know some of you, I know some of the girls in the collaboration hadn't heard of the song The Twelve Days of Christmas before we did the collaboration. Now, um, maybe a little ignorant on my part, and I do apologise, but I kind of assumed that everyone knew the song. Um, but having now looked at the history of it, I do now realise it was actually um, 
it was a, it was written here in 1780 in England, actually not here in Wales, in England, um, but the UK. So um, I don't know, maybe it hasn't travelled out to the entire world yet. I'm not quite sure. But uh, basically, it's a song of 12 Days of Christmas. I, I'm not going to sing it for you. <laughs> I won't put you through that, I promise. Um, and it's a, it's a kind of a, a run-on song, as they call it. So basically, you start off with, you know, on the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a partridge in a pear tree. So... That's the first thing that we, d we discuss. Um, so unbeknownst to you all, really, you see, I have been hanging around in all these videos for quite some time because as the partridge, um, I'm in every line of the song. Every verse, rather. I'm in every verse because then it goes on the second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Oh, my goodness. What's the second line? Uh... So on the second day of Christmas, um, you, my true love gave to me um, two turtle doves and so on. And then you would say two turtle doves and a partridge in a pear tree. And it just goes on and on and on until eventually when you get to uh, the 12th verse, you're then saying all 12 things as you go back through the song. Um, so a little bit of history for you about it. Yes, song was written as a chant initially in the uh, in 1780. Um I'm not going to tell you who, who wrote it because I can't remember now. Uh, but it was actually publicised in uh, in Britain, um, which I didn't know. So, as I say, apologies for that because I kind of just assumed it was a, a worldwide thing. Well, it is now, isn't it? Because you all know about it. Um, then it was put to music, I think, at the beginning of the 1900s. So I thought, right, I better do a quick bit of Googling now on the partridge in a pear tree. What's that all about then? Um, Google is very interesting. Um, Google is also a little bizarre <laughs> and he's also full of some very strange uh, interpretations and opinions but some of the most interesting points that I read about this morning was first and foremostly a lot of people are quite shocked when they hear the words partridge in a pear tree because partridges tend to not nest in trees I was not aware of this they are actually grassland birds um, so they don't um, they don't tend to nest up in a tree with their young so for you to say that they were in a pear tree the kind of first reaction to that is always going to be well what the heck was he doing up there um so that's the first thing so when i kind of like read back then um there's you know there's a lot of different theories about it some of them say like i say that it was a um a rhyme that children used in the early 1800s um some say it was something that was used as a bit of a, like a you know a, a bit of a day game or a forfeit game um but others believe that it was actually used um, by uh, the young Catholics of the time um, and that each line of the song is uh, symbolic to uh, symbols of their faith and it was to help them learn about their faith because obviously back in that time it was I believe um, against the law to be a Catholic um, so they had to hide their faith um, you know as many different uh, religions have done over the years different things but that was kind of what was going on at the time so obviously like I say this is all theory and conjecture but very interesting so i thought right well let's find out a little bit more about this um this partridge so the partridge there are, is another theory then that says apparently in i'm gonna i know i'm gonna pronounce this wrong and virginie is gonna laugh at me because she has such beautiful french um apparently partridge in french is pertridge something like that and they do wonder if actually the pear tree was not the pear tree, but was actually a, a French um, interpretation or uh, not interpretation. That's the wrong word I'm looking for. Um, what do you call it? Translation for the word partridge. And it's just been kind of, you know, like we do with slang over the years. Things get misinterpreted. So that's another theory. But, <coughs> oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, what it does say about the partridge is... It is quite symbolic um, because it plays a huge part in um, in history and in people's faith. And it was looked at as a prognosticator. Now, that is a really big word. I had to kind of Google what that meant. And what a prognosticator means is that it is something that makes predictions. So the partridge is a symbol of something that predicts something to come. Now, what they used to say many years ago, 
and it's, isn't it funny we all go on about it when we're doing these videos and we say oh talking about the weather again we're obsessed with the weather it, it's, it's like everything that goes on to history the only thing that is continuous is our obsession with the weather because it doesn't change does it it affects our lives hugely i mean obviously back in those days when you were relying on your crops well, we do now but you know even more so then um yeah weather's going to play a huge part in your, your your life isn't it so some of the old things used to say that the partridge would predict um it would ha there'd be signs on the 12 days of christmas that would then show what the weather was going to be like um for the year to come Gosh, that's a great tool. My goodness, if there'd been any truth in that, can you imagine the weather forecast we'd have today? But I scoff not, it's just an interesting. So after that, they then said that the partridge um, in the pear tree um, was also representative of the, um, the story of the crucifixion of Jesus and that it's symbolic and that it's a representation of Jesus on the cross um, because apparently the mother partridge is um, highly um, protective of her young and she will she does this thing where she lies on the floor and pretends to be injured if her young are in the nest nearby and are under threat and she will basically sacrifice herself um, if there's danger to, in order to protect her young um, now I am pretty certain a lot of um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for animals species would do that humans included um but there's something quite um i don't know something quite fascinating about the fact that she will literally she, she she's on the floor and she, she pretends to be injured in order to distract from the enemy um so yeah they they do say that you also the signs of the um you know the symbolism of the partridge pear tree can be um taken as the same as um jesus on the cross and obviously him dying for everybody else so that um you know to protect us from the enemy so that's one way also of looking at it now something else that i found particularly fascinating whilst on my little google venture this morning um was that yes before you ask i did go down a huge rabbit hole um was that they say obviously about the uh partridge being a predictor a foreteller and what came to mind for me was the angels in the nativity story and how obviously they um they foretold didn't they they came and foretold many people um mary the shepherds um who else did they come to uh, john the baptist's mother elizabeth um and also back in isaiah very very early on in the old testament uh he repeats the same thing there as well about the foretelling um of baby jesus's birth um so I just then thought my mind was kind of went off on one then and I thought well this is really interesting so if maybe the partridge in the pear tree is a symbol of somebody that foretells something that's coming um if it is a symbol of something that is to be uh, foretelling is that then why we traditionally I don't know if this is worldwide again like I say but I know in my country traditionally we put an angel on the top of our Christmas tree I don't know. That's not an answer. That was a, a rhetorical question. I'm just throwing that out there. I'm just surmising. I just thought that that was very interesting. So being as how the angels in the nativity story obviously came and told us all about, well, they didn't tell us, but told the people in the story about uh, the birth of Jesus coming. He's on his way. Um, is that why they then have a partridge? And is that why we now have angels on our tree? I don't know, but I quite like that. And having now just returned from Dublin, where we've been for a week and we've been touring around uh, cathedrals and churches and oh my goodness there are so many beautiful buildings there to look at um really interesting because obviously you take note then of um their symbolism and their kind of um you know traditions and i just thought mm. i'm not usually one for kind of you know things like that but i did like, find that fascinating this morning so there you go everyone that's a little bit of useless information for you um to save you getting bored while I was doing my little bit of hand stitching. So there we go. All of my branches are now stitched. I have now got my uh, thread ready because I'm now going to just put this together. Where's it gone? Right, here's my thread. I'm going to do another knot now and I'm going to just stitch these together now. So before I do that, I'm going to get the page because the one thing that I do suggest that you do at this point now is to check your sizing. 
So I'm going to just put my page on here a second. And I'm just going to gather it in as I think I would like it to sit. Now, obviously, this can be as big or as small as you want it to be. Um, obviously, it's going to be the main feature of my page. So it, it needs to be quite considerable, I think. Um, there we go. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a fan, but there we are. I quite like that. Let's put that a bit up there. That's better. Right. So now the idea is that these bits here will stick out at the top of the page. So I think, I'm sorry, I'm try not to get my head in your way now. Well, I just double check that, but I'm quite happy with that. That looks pretty symmetrical to me. I'm just going to stick a pin in it, as we say. Do you like that? Stick a pin in it. I'm just going to pick it up so I can see. Oh, yes, that looks great. Right, I'm really happy with that. So I'm going to just take that off the paper a minute, keep the pin in it and try to do this now without stabbing myself and my finger. And I'm just going to pop my needle all the way through the center. Now, oh, I knew I was going to do that. Now, as I said, you can take as little or as long, as long or as little a time as you want over this process. Um, I'm kind of in a hurry because I've got a bit of a clock ticking against me a minute. So I'm just going to quickly stitch this and I will speed you up so you haven't got to sit and watch. Um, but I suggest that you secure this quite firmly into place. Okay. Okay, so that is our um, tree top now all stitched into place. Um, <clears throat> obviously, once you've finished, what I've done, you might have noticed I, I, if I left it on the film, um, is that I've just did some little tacks between each one to kind of keep the, the, the branches from flopping about too much. Um, I haven't tacked it all down too much because, like I say, you want it to feel a little bit you know, bushy. It's meant to be a tree, isn't it? So, um, but I have kind of, you know, tacked a few bits down just to stop it flopping around. So you can do that too. Um, but I'm quite happy with that. That looks like a nice bushy uh, tree to me now. So the next thing we're going to look at now is the, um, the trunk. So I'm just going to very quickly show you because I'm sure you all know how to make these. Um, and I'm just going to very quickly show you how I do mine. So what we're going to do for the trunk is we're going to make a large ruffle. Um, now this ruffle is going to form the structure of your belly band. So it needs to be not really robust, but it needs to be fairly structured, if that makes sense. So the way I make my ruffles when I'm using them for something like this is I obviously got a nice long piece of fabric here. Um, and I literally take, uh, I usually leave about an inch at the top and then I take the, the, the fabric to my fingers and my thumb and I just fold back about, I'm going to say, what is that? Uh, yeah, it's, it's approximately a centimetre. They're not all a centimetre wide. I'm really not that good. I'm really not that neat, as you know. Um, and I don't like it to be perfect anyway because it doesn't look right. This is a junk journal. It's meant to look a little bit crazy. Um, that's what we love about them, isn't it? That they're just unique and everyone is different. But obviously when it comes to your ruffle, it's kind of helpful if it is, you know, tidy and a little bit symmetrical because you want it to run down the centre of the page. So try and get your, your, your folds to be, you know, fairly unified. Um, and basically all I'm doing here, I don't always pin it. Sometimes I just do this in, in, under the machine, but obviously I want you to be able to see because I know some of you may not know how to make a ruffle. Um, but th this is literally it. You're, you're just going down your piece of, you can do this with paper. If you guys, sorry, I forgot about you guys who may be working with paper. If you're working with paper, I expect you to be doing exactly the same thing now. A really long, nice piece of paper. And you're going to just fold it up as you go along. 
make folds in it. Obviously, you'll need to pin it because once you fold, it should stay there. Um, but you're going to fold it up and then you are going to finish then by either gluing it or uh, running it under a sewing machine really quickly. Um, or you can just do a hand, run in hand stitch to it if you don't have a machine. So please don't be put off by any of these activities if you don't have a sewing machine. Um, you know, these items can either be glued together or um, <clears throat> hand stitched. So I'm not going to waste any more time doing that. You can see what I'm doing. That's the principle. You're just folding, 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 folding. Okay, so you've got that. So this is the beginning of the ruffle. <clears throat> Let's get rid of that one. Here's one I did earlier on. Oop. I've got the thread everywhere now. Oh, one of my pins is coming out. Bessley Plansy. Right, there we go. So this is my Blue Peter one. One I made earlier. Do, do you all know what Blue Peter is? Blue Peter was a children's program when I was a child. I think it's still on. Um, it basically teaches you all sorts of things, but they always had an art and craft bit on there. And they would start doing the demonstration, tell you what to do, and then they would always come up with one that had been done beforehand. And they would say, and here is one we made earlier. So when I say this is my Blue Peter one, that's what I mean. So this is my completed pinned ruffle. Now you can kind of see where I was going with this fabric, yeah? The fabric's got like little branches on it. It's almost brown, you know? It would look rather fetching as a trunk, I thought. Now obviously another thing to bear in mind, this piece needs to be quite long because you're going to fit this to the page. Oh, look, see, I haven't uh, pinned that straight. You're going to fit this to your page from top to bottom because it needs to be structurally sound because it is a belly band, all right? Obviously not at this stage, we've got to put it together first, but just so that you're aware of the length it needs to be, it needs to be long enough when folded to reach from top to bottom. So whether you decide to then stitch it to the top and bottom or glue it, whichever, it needs to reach from the top to the bottom. And then the flower will then sit decoratively on the top, okay? So that's how it looks when it's been pinned. Pretend I've run over to the sewing machine now. This is where I say, oh, I'm just going to run over to the sewing machine and put a stitch through it. I know where all this thread has come from. Now, here's one I finished earlier on. I actually did this one last night. This was my first one that I did. I wasn't going to use this one because <laughs> it, it felt a bit dark. But when I then decided to put the red into my tree, I thought, oh, that's just so cute. And it's really Christmassy. And it's a little bit Celtic as well with that lovely tartan in it so i really like that i hope you like it i hope you don't think she, oh, she should have gone with the brown but no that's just to show you obviously if you're not working on christmas you know nice bit of brown fabric you could do this with anything even if you only have white linen you could coffee dye it to make it look like a trunk but obviously as it's christmas it doesn't really need to look like a trunk it's a metaphorical trunk isn't it so there we go trunk made and this is now going to be fitted to the page but before i do that I now have to decide how I'm going to fix my tree. So probably the sensible thing here to do would be to stitch this now to the top of the belly band because that's going to just really reinforce it. <clears throat> You're going to have to hand stitch this. I really don't advocate you putting this under your sewing machine because it would probably bend your needle because there's so much going on under there now. Um, so I'm just going to double check now on my where everything is because it needs to be in the right place i want that at the top there and i'm going to put that in the center there right so it's hopefully i've picked up the belly band behind yep so let me just stick a pin in that a minute just to guide me okay and i'm going to quickly tack this and then i will show you what i'm going to do next So that in from a structure perspective, that is our tree made. That is our belly band made. That is our tree made. Okay, Rachel, say fine, but it doesn't look very much like a pear tree. No, it doesn't. So that's the next job. The next thing I'm going to do now is we're going to make it look like a pear tree. I'm going to add some pears. Well, 
I don't have any spare pairs hanging around. So this is kind of where we get creative now, guys. This is where we look at what we've got in our stash and you think to yourself, right, what can I use? So I've got a couple of items up here um, that I had thought I may use. So I've got some buttons. Oh, I don't want that one. Um, you know, they look a little bit pearish, don't they? Well, they might do, you know, it's only a representation. Um, and then when I was sifting in my box, I found, and I was sent these in a, a swap, I think, a stash swap a while back, but I found these lovely little shells. And I thought, you know what, actually, from a distance, they do look quite pear-like, don't they? So I picked up some yellow ones and some green ones, and I thought, right, well, I'm going to just give that a little go and we'll see. And I can hang them in, and they will look like little pears. So... I'm going to really quickly do that now. I'm just going to put a thread through and then we will hang a few of these on the tree and then hopefully it will look a little bit more like a pear tree. Is our pear tree oh now she looks like a pear tree doesn't she excellent okay so a little bit of stitching i'm going to go and do now i am just going to go and take the top of the belly band and i'm going to stitch it to the top of the page okay so what i have done now i have stitched the belly band at the top i've simply peeled that back there stitch across the top so that's now fixed to the page and um, i almost went to stitch the bottom bit and thankfully stopped and paused and then realized i'd almost forgotten the most important part so that's our tree done let's now look at the partridge that's going to go in the pear tree so what i've got here this is what i'm going to use these for so if you remember i showed you at the end of the video this is the freebie um the link for that is in the description box and what i have done i have cut out um i think i cut that one out there i cut out that one there and i have made um two small slits I wasn't going to do that on camera. You, you all know how to make a slit in a, in a card, don't you? So what I did was I basically just put the piece of card underneath the um, the uh, ruffle. And I marked it with a pencil so I could see where the ruffle lay. And then I took it out. I drew a line with a pencil to make sure that it was central. And I drew a line with a pencil. Obviously with a pencil, with a ruler, I mean. Made sure it was central. And then I used my craft knife and my ruler. And I just did two small cuts and then I just took out that small piece so I haven't just cut it I have actually removed about a millimeter of it um either side I hope you can see that there I don't want to put you in focus so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to thread the trunk of our tree through the little gaps here And I'm going to just move that up there. And then I'm going to bring this down here. And there we have our partridge in a pear tree. Number one. Look at that. Hey, hey. And you can move that up and down. You can position it at the bottom if you prefer, all according to what you're putting in your belly band. Or you can slide it halfway up. But you basically have options there now to do um, whatever you want to do with that. So now I can stitch. Oh, is it good if I paused? I'd have been gutted, wouldn't I? Now I can stitch this bit onto the bottom now and we will have a nice firm belly band. So I'm just going to nip and do that and then I will be back. Okay. So that is the um, the structure all done now. I've stitched my um, my pages together now just so that it makes this a little bit more sturdy because obviously I'll be placing this in two 
um, the giveaway journal. Um, so that's that done. Um, the next thing I'm just going to quickly do now is to make a little journal card to go underneath our um, belly band. So what I've prepared here to quickly put together, um, I've taken one of the, um, if you remember the collage card I did, I had some of that left over, so I've made a large journal card out of that, which I'm hoping now will fit. I didn't actually check. Yes, it fits. Phew! Phew! Okay. And I have already done some stitching around the edge, so that's done. But she's already inked. So all I'm going to do now is just very, very quickly add um, some words. Because we need to put on here, it's our partridge in the pear tree. So I've, on the uh, giveaway sheet, I've printed this out onto vellum. And I am going to just add these on to here very quickly. So let me make sure I've got them in all, the right order now a second. So here we go. So there we go, we're all finished. Um, here's our journaling card. I've added a little heart, just because it's obviously first day of Christmas, true love, and I've put number one on there. I've added a little cluster using some of the fabrics from the tree, and I've just put a bit of lace on there and hand-stitched that with a little button on. And then I've used the uh, flower decal out of the, um, the freebie, because it matches with the belly band. <laughs> And I've just made a little tab with that. So let's just double check now this is going to fit. Oh, lovely. Look at that. So there we go. There is our partridge in a pear tree. Number one. The last day of the A to Z Christmas collaboration. I really hope that you've all enjoyed um, joining us for the collaboration. I hope you've enjoyed all of the activities and everything that everybody's shown you. Please don't forget to enter your entries for the giveaway. Get those comments onto the videos. Um, and it closes midnight British time. So that's Greenwich Mean Time um, on the 2nd of December. And the draw will take place on the evening of the 3rd of December. So good luck, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. And I will be back with you very soon. Take care now. Bye.